if you need to do uh, CHS registration, remember right here, number five is where you would go for that. And then you do have the, uh, the Aspire website with all the information. Uh, but what I want you to do is we're going to common websites. Open up NoodleBib. You need to open up Noodle Tools for me to be able to show you how this uh, archive, this thing works. So you want to go into Noodle Tools. I'll close out all this stuff. Remember your login was your la first four of your last name, first three of your first name, graduation year, and then NHSD, NHSD. It should be saved to your computer now. The other thing, and it, again, if you're logged into your browser where you see your email at the top, your bookmark bar should be visible. But you want to make sure you have a bookmark bar. Remember, you go to the three little dots, go to bookmarks, and then go to show bookmark bar um, in case you don't have it. Because for archive this to work, you want to make sure that this is loaded up. So you should have your show your bookmark bar so that you have that under the URL address. Uh, within Noodle Tools, Make sure that you do open your CHS project. So I'm going to be in my CHS argumentation. And then you're just going to leave it like this. In a new tab, we're going to type in archive this. And then I'm going to type in noodle tools just to make sure it brings it up. That should work. And lo and behold, you should have a thing that says Noodle Tools Archive. Look at all those results in 0.34 seconds. Impressive. You got a thing called Noodle Tools Archive. You click on that link, and it should bring up this, or at least something similar. Are we good? Archive this Noodle Tools. <coughs> And then it should bring up where you'll have a Noodle Tools archive as your web page. And then it'll give you this picture. You're back for more. Thank you. And now is the trickiest thing that you are going to do all semester. Take your little arrow. Go over the archive this button thing. Click and drag so that it comes up to your bookmark bar where you see that little plus sign and let go and it should now say archive this. What? This is hand-eye coordination, finger coordination to the max. Click, drag, so it should say archive this up at the top. Crazy. They did. So if you log in at home and you log into, into Chrome, into the browser with your student Gmail that you have now, archive this should be there. Anything that you bookmark should be there. So if you find a web page, you know, you just hit bookmark and you're logged in. When you log in onto that browser on some other computer device, it should be there. We okay with the archive this? You getting it, Corey? This, this is tricky. Anyone completely lost? It's been weeks. Josh, you okay? Oh, yeah, I'm good. Okay. All right, so here's what happens. I'm just going to go to a random, I'm going to go to Post-Gazette. I'm going to do research on the Steelers' defense as to how technology has not advanced humanity. No matter what technological devices we use, we are going to give up yards and remain winless. So... I'm at an article that any good student probably would not use for this assignment. But again, it's me. Hey, this is going to be useful for me. I think I like this. I hit the little archive this button. Hopefully, school Wi-Fi works for me. Maybe. We're establishing a secure connection. Maybe. Or post gazette sometimes. Uh, I use my parents' account. I want to try a different article since it was getting stuck there. 
what would happen, or what should happen at least then, is when I hit archive this, a little um, pop-up box shows up where, and the web sites were being kind of funky this morning anyway, where it will automatically save it into my Noodle Bib account. Now, what it will say is I have to choose my class, I have to choose my project. So you'd have to select CHS argumentation as your project. There is a text box where it will say annotation, where you could type in your two sentences. That text box has never worked for any member of the human race to my knowledge. So you can't do that part, but it should automatically then copy it over into NoodleBit. Again, because people are watching, it's not working for me. I want to see if maybe by some chance the source has popped up. I don't think they would have. And again, we have so many spinny things here. No, that's the one that we did before. Uh, I'll give it one more shot. I don't know. You might get better luck. But it's a way for you to automatically save it. The other nice thing that it does is it archives the page. So rather than you bookmarking pages nonstop, you could go into Noodle Tools and you'd be able to view the page. So if you didn't get to read the whole article, you would still be able to kind of access to it through Noodle Tools. The one thing that it does not work for would be if you have a website that starts off with HTTPS, that means it is secure, that it is encrypted. It cannot work on a secure website. So there are some things where like some logins are required that it might not let you um, work for it. But for a lot of them, like a CNN.com, that kind of stuff, you shouldn't have any issues with it. Of course, I'm just having issues now. Oh, CNN is secure, so it would not work for, for that one. I'm sorry? Credible sources. Kavanaugh's future now hangs in the balance. Um, all right, so. We were taking a look at the, um, the library databases. There's the pro con. There's also SIRS, which I think you folks would have used before a lot with like 10th grade when you're doing research and stuff like that. Opposing viewpoints and SIRS tend to be the two best databases, I would say, within the school library. Some other websites that I have listed for you, I have two of them here, um, procon.org and iDebate. Um, which is the International Debate Association. These are nice ones to take a look at because they will break down a lot of topics and whatnot for you. The International Debate Education Association is basically the people in charge of high school debates on the international level. So they do get the check mark, um, credible kind of source thing to take a look at. And you could go to like IDEA through UK if you wanted to or, or whatnot. Um, they kind of changed the, the, out, uh, the layout of their website. They do have this thing, though, up here at the top called Debatabase, which is just a fun word to say. Debatabase. Remember Diddles? That was fun. Um, <laughs> common websites on Google Classroom. So topic number two, and I scroll down, International Debate Education Association, idea. You got it? Good question. So what they have here is they'll break them down into different kind of categories. So, you know, culture, economy, education, environment, all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, sport might be one of something that I want to take a look at when it comes to technology. What it will do is it then gives you common arguments that will be both in favor of and against. I would treat this as like a Wikipedia type thing. Um, in the sense that you're not going to take arguments strictly from it, but that we are using this as a way to accumulate more sources. Um, yeah, I'll go with this one. House Please Traditional University will be replaced by online learning. So you could take a look at that at technology, giving you more options when it comes to, uh, to education. What they'll do is then give you some arguments that you can kind of take a look at that would both be in favor or against. And they kind of sometimes want to know how you feel with it. If you click on any of these, or most of these, they'll then give you some tidbits of information that you could kind of take a look at. So it's a good way for kind of brainstorming some stuff. Um, what they will do, again, if we establish a secure connection, we can go over it more. Uh, what they'll do is they'll provide sources for you. You are not going to put iDebate 
in um, your NoodleBit project, but you can use the sources that come from iDebate as primary sources. So down here, there's a bibliography. A lot of these have web addresses. If any of these look like they would be useful, that would be something that you could use. So again, Luke's not going to use this as his source, but if he wants to go to that bibliography and says, hey, this article here from uh, the Chronicle of Higher Education looks to be good, that could be something that he could then utilize with, within his research. So use iDebate kind of as a way to accumulate some sources um, as opposed to it being a source in itself. Under common websites, there's also one that's procon.org. It literally is what it sounds like. It gives you arguments for and against, much like um, iDebate. Same thing. You can use it as a way to accumulate some sources, but you're not going to use it as a source itself. So what do you know? NFL National Anthem protest, pros and cons. This seems like that would match up pretty good with our resolution when it comes to um, athletics and entertainment has become over-politicized. This would be something that you could look at. Again, you're not going to have Nina putting in ProCon.org within Noodle Tools, but she can then use the sources that kind of come with it for, um, for uh, Noodle Tools, assuming, again, the web page loads. So these ones give you access to other stuff that you can use, just like the databases use access to the things you can use. Archive This does not work on databases. So don't try that. I can't get Archive This to work on anything right now. But Archive This does not work on the databases. You would want to copy and paste those citations in at the bottom of the article, just like we were showing you on Friday. Archive This would work when you were at something like uh, the Chronicle here, um, although this one is secure, so I guess it probably would not go through as much. But um, don't try Archive This when it comes to using the databases themselves. I hope you folks have better internet access than I do. Here we go. So this is giving me stuff with Kaepernick that I could use. Again, I'm seeing arguments for, I'm seeing arguments against. As I scroll through on Procon.org, you'll start to see that there are places where there are footnotes. Like here, I have a footnote number four. If I click on that link, now it gives me a whole host of sources that I could certainly take a look at. Some of them are going to be online sources that would be easy to locate. Others are going to be print, which might be a little bit difficult, but you would probably be able to do at least a search for Sam Weich, you know, Colin Kaepernick explains why he sat during National Anthem, and be able to put that in. Megan, to your point about, like, our debate's going to be a little too repetitive, if every single argument was built around Colin Kaepernick, yes, number four would probably get a little too repetitive, but we would want to be able to kind of spread out and take a look at some other stuff, too. I want to give you time to, to kind of do a little research and, and start getting a feel for things. Any questions with, like, where you can locate stuff? You certainly still can use Google. Where I want you to stay away from, number one, blogs. Um, stay away from a blog just because it's not necessarily credible enough with it. Um, stay away from like the comments section. So you find an article in Post Gazette that you like, but then you're going to, you know, hey, this is what Tony from Millvale had to say about it. Don't cite Tony from Millvale as a credible source. If your online article, you don't have an author, stay away from it. You should have at least a title, an author, and a publication date. Those would be the main things that you would want to have. Basically, what's going to happen this week, though, is every day you're going to come in, you're going to grab a laptop, and you'll be able to kind of start research. As I said, I would take a piece of paper, um, devote to each topic. I would either fold it in half, you know, lengthwise or um, width, but then you have a pro and you have a con argument for each one so that you have quick access to some stuff. You might find some sources that work both affirmative and negative. You might find some sources that actually work for multiple arguments. That's perfectly fine. I'm not doing a check for noodle tools at the end of the assignment where you get say at the end of the semester. So if Josh gets four sources, Medina gets 18 sources, it's not that she's getting more points right now, it just means that she has a larger head start than you do when it comes to accumulating those 50. Whenever we have laptops out, people always ask a question. Mr. Kane, can I put in my earbuds or headphones, as long as it's plugged into your laptop, yes. I don't want the cell phone sitting out with the earbuds plugged into those, but if you want to listen to something while you are watching, that's fine. Um, you also certainly, uh, there might be some sources that you find that are newscasts. 
So you can certainly cite newscasts and, and, and video article type things. Um, I don't have an issue with that, so you might actually need to listen to them while you are working on, on that. All right. Any questions about what our resolutions are or anything along those lines? Again, you have them listed on your rubric. They're also listed on Google Classroom, so you should be able to locate them pretty, pretty easily. Okay. So when we go up there and are actually debating, um, 